When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Hey, I'm Shauna Compton Game. This is Millennial Money, and today we're talking a new revolution in higher education with Adam Braun from Mission U. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. Millennial Money Podcast is brought to you today by Freshly. Freshly's chefs make dinner a reality. Freshly delivers fully cooked, prepared meals straight to your door. You get to skip the shopping, the chopping, and all of that cleanup. All you have to do is heat them up and your meal is literally ready to eat in only three minutes. And the best part, Freshly's fresh all-natural meals cost 25% less per meal than the average cost of takeout. And you'll never be stuck sitting around waiting for the food to arrive. Right now, Freshly is running a special offer for Millennial Money listeners. Get six dinners cooked by their chefs for $20 off. To try Freshly out, go to Freshly.com and enter code MILLENNIAL to get $20 off your first week. That's six meals for just $39 plus free shipping. Remember, the offer is only valid for a limited time, so go to Freshly.com and enter code MILLENNIAL for $20 off and free shipping. Attending college in the United States comes at a price, a really steep price. And if you ask me my opinion, it feels almost criminal. If not criminal, I'm going to say highly, highly unethical that we're creating this problem for our youth and strapping on their backs massive amounts of debt. You know, we tell students that you have to go to college if you want to get a good job. So you go to college, you take on a ton of student debt or you work yourself crazy to pay for college, then you graduate. And there aren't any jobs that will pay a salary worthy of that massive student loan bill. It just doesn't feel right to me, but I don't really know what the solution is, you know, and and no one's really seemed to come up with a solution that that works. According to a recent CNBC article, in-state students enrolled at public four-year universities pay an average of $20,090 per year, including tuition fees, room and board. That increases to $34,220 for out-of-state students a year. Per year, right? Tuition and fees alone come at a hefty cost, nearly $10,000 for in-state students at public universities. And to make college possible, what many of us do, over 44 million Americans turn to student loans. Sometimes it's the only way that you can pay for college. Bringing the cumulative debt in this country to $1.4 trillion and growing. And growing rapidly. It's scary how fast this debt, the student loan debt is growing. The average cost of tuition rose 63% between 2006 and 2016. That number literally made me fall out of the chair. That's a 10 year period with a 63% tuition increase. It's unheard of really. 
you know, and the average student graduates with $37,000 in student loan debt. And if you ask me, I think that's on the low side, really. So what do we do? You know, what do you do if you've graduated and you still can't find a good paying job? You know, where, where do you turn? Uh, where do you turn if you're a college student and it's just not the right path for you? You, you don't know what options are out there and yet society's telling you, you got to go to school, you got to get this degree. And by the way, you're going to have a massive amount of student loan debt when you graduate. Well, I want to just introduce you to my new friend, Adam Braun. The inspiration for his company, Mission U, struck when Adam realized how broken our country's higher education system and the rising student debt problem was during Pencils of Promise, his first business that he ran. And this had hit really close to home when he saw his wife struggle to pay back more than $100,000 in student loans even after dropping out without a degree since she couldn't afford the tuition. So, I mean, that is like the worst scenario possible, right? You're not going to get the degree and you still owe the massive student loan debt. So Adam had a choice. You know, he could look at a broken system and throw his hands up in the air, which many people are doing because it just, it doesn't seem like there's a good solution to this problem. Or he could do what many smart entrepreneurial millennials are doing, which is creating a solution. So Adam created Mission You. And I, you're going to just be blown away when you hear this story. So Mission U is a debt-free college alternative that teaches students the skills they need for today's most in-demand jobs and doesn't require upfront tuition. Like, can we ring like 10 bells right now? I mean, that was everything we've ever wished for, like in one sentence. At Mission Year, they partner with today's top companies, including Spotify, Lyft, Uber, Warby Parker, and Casper who help them de- develop the curriculum, and then they have early access to hire all the graduates. Even better, right? It's starting to get better. So we've got the average college student graduating with $37,000 in debt. We've already established that. Admission you, the students graduate with $0 in debt. I don't know about you, but when I'm talking about debt, I like zero way better than I like $37,000. Mission U only requires students to pay once they're earning $50,000 or more, during which they pay only 15% of their income for three years back to the company. So a really small fraction, right? And the program just kicked off its first cohort in San Francisco, attracting nearly 5,000 applicants for just 30 spots. So it's tough to get in, you know? Some even left college halfway while others already had earned a degree, but still are choosing Mission U because... It's something different. It's it's maybe the beginning of a solution. So, you know, I ask, could this be the start of our country and other countries around the world really, truly shaking up the education system? I'm really hoping so. In fact, I think I'm going to bet on it. All right, Adam. Well, I am so excited to have you on uh, this podcast episode for Millennial Money and talk all about Mission U. And, you know, this is a subject that, I think has has really grabbed the attention of so many of the listeners of this podcast, certainly all around the U.S., the cost of education, the anxiety, the stress, everything that goes along with it. Can you just give a little bit of background about how you got the inspiration for Mission U? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, it really struck by spending time on college campuses. So, you know, my background, I'm I'm born and raised in the Northeast, uh, born in New York, raised in Connecticut. And you know, I ended up uh, after college working at Bain and Company, um, you know, recently rated the, the number one company in the world to work for by its own employees ahead of Google and, you know, Facebook and Apple and a whole bunch of others. And it's just an, an incredible training ground. And I was really grateful to have spent time there. But, you know, I'd always been entrepreneurial. Uh, and so I founded the organization Pencils of Promise, which has now built more than 400 schools around the world and serves children in rural parts of the developing world. World. And, you know, a lot of our growth came as a result of support from uh, youth. And so, you know, as the organization grew, I found myself on many college campuses around the country. And this was everything from, you know, uh, elite top tier schools to large public state schools to local community colleges and states really uh, across the U.S. And, you know, I'd go on these campuses and I'd tell students about the value of, um, you know, philanthropy and thinking about supporting children around the world. 
And on every campus, you know, regardless of the type of school, there'd always be a subset of students that would raise their hands during Q&A and say, you know, this is really nice, but I can't even think about something like that because I'm just drowning in college debt. And I don't feel like I'm learning anything that is relevant to the real world. Is there anything that you can do about uh, a very broken system here at home? And, you know, that became very personal when I met my wife because she was one of those people who, you know, bought into college as the path to social mobility, to a better life ahead, uh, very loving family, but without a lot of financial means. And, you know, she went to college uh, for about three years. And in those three years, racked up so much debt that she had to leave school early to start working uh, due to the financial hardship she incurred. And by the time I met her, she had over $100,000 of student debt. Uh, and didn't have any of the skills that were actually going to help her uh, to reach that that goal that she had actually aspired towards. And, you know, eventually through through the lens of her experience, I learned that student debt is the only debt in the United States that cannot be discharged through bankruptcy. It's with you for life. Um, and, you know, if you leave the country, or if you die, oftentimes they go after your family, your parents uh, who usually have to co-sign on these huge loans. And so, you know, that was incredibly motivating for me um, to try and, you know, really right a, a wrong that I saw happening in our society, in particular to folks that are between the ages of 18 to 30. And uh, it was the inspiration to, to start Mission You. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like so applaud you because, you know, you talk about, I think, two really important things. Not only is the cost, obviously, you know, the big elephant in the room, but then also just the ability to get jobs once you graduate. So if you if you're taking on a hundred thousand dollar loan and you're you're getting out there in the workforce and there are no jobs available to you, you know, it makes the impact of that loan even worse. You know, in, in your exactly. opinion, you know, and, and what you're kind of creating at Mission U, how do we begin to fix this broken system? Sure. So, um, you know, the first part is that institutions need to have real significant skin in the game. So one of the problems that we have with today's system is, you know, the college doesn't really uh, get negatively impacted if the student doesn't see a positive end result. Right. Um, you know, the government or a private loan provider or that student's family is putting up all this money up front and they're doing so before the student even gets access to the educational experience, let alone on whether they achieve the outcome that they're seeking. And, you know, there's a big national study that's done every year where um, freshmen are asked, what is the main reason that you're going to college? And, you know, the number one answer that's given, 91% of freshmen say to get a better job. But when you look at the level of, uh, you know, college professors and administrators that see that as their core responsibility, it's only in the teens, right? Um, they don't think that their job is to help that student get a better job. It's, it's a whole bunch of other things. Yep. And so you have this huge misalignment uh, between the motivations of the people that are taking on this huge debt burden, being the students and their families, and those that are actually providing the educational service. And we need to bring that much closer together. And so, you know, those are the two problems in my eyes is this huge upfront cost and then a lack of alignment. And so at Mission U, we solve for that in a number of ways. The first is um, we kind of turn the table uh, on the cost expectations. So when you are accepted into Mission U, you actually pay no tuition at all uh, wow. upfront nor throughout the year in which you are receiving access to the education. So it's a one year program, a uh, higher education program. And when you get in, um, you know, we commit to investing in you rather than vice versa. And so you get access to essentially, you know, a, a year's worth of no cost, uh, debt free education. And uh, in partnership uh, to enable that, what you commit to is a percentage of your income um, only if and when you end up successful after our program. And so what that looks like is 15% of your income uh, for just 36 months, but only if and when you are making $50,000 or more after you leave our program. And you know, there's a, a time bound to it. There's also an upper cap so that, uh, let's say you hit the jackpot and you know you get $10 million given to you. You, you know, we don't expect 15% of that. In fact, if you're making six figures or more, it's actually, you know, comes down at that point to less than 15%. Um, and so there's a very reasonable cap to, to protect the upside for students. So. You know, that, that is absolutely critical to us is that from day one, you know, we put our flag in the sand and we said, you know, we're not going to, um, you know, have students pass a dollar unless they see a successful outcome. And so, you know, unless you're making $50,000 or more uh, after leaving Mission U, uh, you're not paying us a dollar. Um, and let's say you went a total of seven years and you weren't making $50,000 or more. The contract would actually end altogether and you'd have absolutely no go forward obligation to Mission U because that's not a successful outcome for you. And therefore, uh, we would not see that as a successful outcome for us. 
Yeah, that that's amazing. So what type of classes do the students actually participate in to get these valuable skills? Sure. So, um, yeah, happy to talk about the curriculum and the actual program itself, because this is one of the things that we're really most proud of. So, you know, to, to make sure that that alignment is happening between the students, you know, aspirations and, and their outcomes. Before we ever started actually recruiting students, we were recruiting employer partners. And this is one of the things that was really critical to us was that we spent a lot of time with leading companies. Um, and, you know, again, we talked to students about what are your dream companies. And then we went out and we built partnerships with those companies. Uh, that have three components to it. The first is they deeply advise us on our curriculum. So we're constantly calibrating against the needs of industry and what we're hearing are the actual skills um, and character traits and um, components of individuals that they're looking to hire. Um, so we take that into account into the year long program. Uh, we also co-create content and experiences. So, you know, if I look at my undergraduate experience, I, I never visited a company once and I probably <laughs> only heard once or twice from anyone who actually worked at a real company at the time. Um, and I just don't think that's right. And so what we have is our students here essentially on a weekly basis from uh, a speaker series that we have that includes, you know, CEOs of the top companies of today, all the way down to, you know, you know, frontline hiring managers and heads of talent to the actual people that are in the jobs that our students want. Uh, they also visit companies uh, really frequently. So we do on sites with partners where, you know, for example, Spotify is a large partner of ours and Spotify actually hosted the entire first day of our orientation. Um, so, you know, you spend the entire day at the Spotify office, uh, you get to meet, you know, obviously their staff. We did a panel uh, towards the end of the day with data scientists from Spotify, Uber, Twitter, uh, Allstate, and then a high growth startup called Shipt um, that's based in the San Francisco Bay Area where uh, our first cohort is. And uh, then the third part is they get early preferred access to this pipeline of incredibly diverse talent. And so for companies, it's great. Um, and for students, it's great. And so. Uh, you know, the way the year is broken out is in three trimesters. Uh, the first trimester is really a, a combination of eight core hard skills that we think should make up the modern business degree. Um, you know, I was a business economics major from uh, Brown University, but I had no idea how to even use Excel whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> that, and that sounds about main, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, you know, a top tier school, uh, business economics major spent, you know, two to whatever, four years focused on this pursuit. Um, and, uh, you know, I had no idea how to even open Excel, let alone, you, you, you know, build a model, which was the main part of my job at Bain & Company in my first year. So our students uh, actually get trained by folks that are uh, former practitioners, you know, essentially top tier hires from top tier companies. And, and those are our instructors. And you learn things not only like Excel modeling, how to build, you know, PowerPoint decks, but um, how to use information to uh, be an effective storyteller, how to manage groups and projects, how to be effective in business writing, public speaking, etc. And then we mix that in our first trimester with the holistic self-development that so many people think of as part of the liberal arts education. You know, the liberal arts education, in my opinion, is a set of ideals that a lot of schools are actually failing to deliver on. You know, telling students that uh, they have to take a bunch of general education classes doesn't help them gain a sense of self. It doesn't help them with critical thinking and reasoning skills. Um, what does provide that are a set of very, you know, clear courses that have been successful and two in particular. One of them is the most popular course at Stanford undergraduate. It's called Designing Your Life. There's a New York Times bestseller out by the founder of the course. Um, and then a second that. course. Yep, yep. A second course um, is, is called Interpersonal Dynamics, uh, which is the most popular course at the Stanford Graduate School of Business. And we have former lecturers from those two courses on full-time staff here at Mission U. And we've uh, created a, a curriculum that's inspired by those two courses and very reflective of them. And our first trimester blends the hard skills with the soft skills and that holistic self-development that uh, came out of the, the learnings of those two courses. And it's really, really transformational for our students. The second trimester is a deep dive into your major. Uh, right now, the first major that we're offering is in data analytics and business intelligence. Uh, enormously high growth field. You can work in a ton of different companies. Uh, everything from, you know, not just your big businesses, but retail, um, media companies, um, high growth e-commerce, like everything across the board is using uh, data to make better decisions. And you can also work in most departments with this skill set. So, you know, if you want to be a data scientist, sure, you can go work there. But if you want to work in marketing, you want to work in finance and operations and sales, uh, all of those um, departments are, are now hiring for these types of roles. And they're not being taught on college campuses. And they're also incredibly well paying. You know, the average uh, data analyst in, in the Bay Area makes about $90,000. And so, um, 
you know, these are these are great high demand jobs, but there's not enough talent that has the skill set to really fill it today. And then, you know, your your third trimester at Mission U is real world work experience. It's a fellowship uh, or you can think of it similar to an internship where you're actually working for uh, a great company or, or organization um, for a full trimester and you're actually getting the experience so that you complete the year uh, with not only a, a robust public portfolio, but a set of references, um, you know, and industry uh, examples and, and, you know, the ability to point to uh, actual critical experience when you're looking uh, for that full time job to say, I've actually done this already, and here's the people you can speak to at a leading company that will tell you uh, how effective I've been. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all in one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30 day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash ETM. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration fixtures so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be buried in an avalanche? Weird foreign feeling of despair. Or how it feels to crash a skydive? I remember hearing a thud, feeling my body hit the ground. Or how you would react 
If you were being attacked by an alligator. At the end of my leg is this huge alligator head on my leg. These are the stories you'll hear on the podcast called What Was That Like? True stories told by the actual person who went through it. You'll hear from a victim of an attack. Dragging me into the bathroom and saying, I'm going to kill you. Now you're going to die. You'll hear from a man who discovered a baby. How could this be? How could there be a baby on the ground? And you'll hear actual 911 calls. Lincoln County 911. There's a man at my back door. He's trying to get in. What Was That Like is a podcast about real people in unreal situations. Search for What Was That Like on any podcast app or at whatwasthatlike.com. Yeah, and then once somebody would uh, graduate from the program, then are they being recruited for these different companies or how does that process work? Yeah, so, um, you know, another <laughs> difference between us and probably a traditional college is, um, you know, if you think about a traditional college, the idea of career services tends to be, you know, two individuals pretty, <laughs> I don't yeah. know what your experience was, but um, I'll say they are pretty you know, late in their careers, kind of hanging out almost similar to a librarian. Um, and they are doing some outreach to organize career fairs. And they have the absolute best of intentions. And so this isn't an effort to knock any of those folks that work in career services. You know, from my experience, they're wonderful people who have great intentions, but they're not out there meeting frontline, you know, with uh, heads of talent and HR and hiring managers every single day uh, or every single week. You know, they're bringing a couple big companies to campus and they're setting up booths. And that's it. And usually as a student, you actually only interface with career services in you know, less than 1% of your college experience. It's kind of you know the back half of your senior year. You say, oh, now I need to start a job search. Let me go to career services and see if they can help. And usually it's, it's challenging. So for us, we, again, kind of reverse engineering that. So you know, in your first trimester, uh, we're spending time with every student getting to know what is their dream job? What are the industries that they're passionate about? And then we actually have a department within Mission U that's exclusively focused on helping you gain pathways into great companies that you would want to work. Um, so we're in conversations somewhere between, I would say, five and 15 times every single week uh, with folks at great companies, talking about our students, building out these partnerships. And you know, part of the reason that we designed that third trimester the way that we did is one of the things we heard from so many companies is, you know, it's it's great that we have an internship program. People come in in the summer, oftentimes, you know, we spend a couple of weeks training them up. They add value for another month or two, and then we're ready to actually now really hire them, but they have to go back to school. And so with Mission U, you know, our expectation is actually a lot of our students will go direct hires um, into the companies where they spent their third trimester. Uh, as an intern or a fellow, and then they'll just become full time right there. And if they don't uh, matriculate directly into that company, then again, we have an entire department built out here to to help them um, in their process of securing a full time job. Wow, yeah. So it's it's obviously very interactive and very ongoing, as it should be. You know, it's it should be an evolving uh, evolving search to find your right fit. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. Uh, you know, so you, you talk to all of these companies, all of these kind of big, hot companies all the time. You know, in your opinion, the feedback that you're hearing from these different companies, what sort of skills are they looking for, you know, for the listeners out there that maybe have been laid off for jobs or just can't find their right fit? You know, what are some of those skills they should be honing up? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, our, our companies that we um, share publicly as employer partners right now are, are Spotify, Lyft, Uber, Warby Parker, Casper, Perry's, et, et cetera. And there's a whole slew of really, really big name companies that we'll announce soon, but I, I can't quite yet. Um, that said, I mean, what I can tell you that we hear consistently from companies is, you know, first and foremost, competency uh, matters more than credentials. You know, what they're looking for are people that can come in, hit the ground running on day one and add value. And the notion that you have a piece of paper that says, you know, I studied international relations or I'm, you know, an economics major uh, no longer really is is a strong proxy for being able to be immediately capable uh, as a great contributor, let alone a long term contributor that they're seeking. So competency actually matters and in interviews, uh, you know, as anyone who's gone through an interview recently can probably attest are increasingly moving towards competency-based interviews, case studies, you know, they're, they're you know, project-based interviews. They're, they're looking to see, can you prove uh, that you can perform the functions that you're actually interviewing for? So that's that's certainly one shift is the move um, to competency over credential. And that's obviously something that, you know, we're um, really big believers is, is a good thing uh, overall, because obviously our students, 
uh, you know, are going to come out of the program with just a tremendous set of very strong competencies. Uh, a second thing that we're really seeing um, is a focus on soft skills. So, you know, there's been an emergence of programs that are really deeply focused on training for technical skills in short periods of time. And that's really wonderful in particular, if you know, you're trying to get into a space like software engineering, um, you certainly need the technical skills, but you know, over time uh, to be a really strong contributor, you need to demonstrate great soft skills. And those include things like um, creative problem solving, uh, collaborative teamwork abilities, critical thinking and reasoning, uh, you know, effective communication, both, you know, over email as well well as in person. And so, so that's actually what we screen for in our admissions at, at Mission U. So, you know, we don't look at um, any form of standardized tests. We remove SAT uh, and ACTs and SAT2s entirely. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the truth is if you, if you look at uh, the data on SATs in particular, it's a perfect representation of, of your family's wealth um, in this country in terms of correlation. It, it actually doesn't I think, predict aptitude or long-term success. It just shows, you know, does your family have the money to help prepare you for a very difficult test? And if so, you're likely going to do much better than somebody who doesn't. So, you know, we remove that bias entirely. We don't look at um, standardized test scores. We also don't look at GPA at all. Uh, we, we ask for these things, but that's just because, um, you know, we're curious about who's going to be successful and who's not. We want to perform longitudinal studies. But uh, when you go through our admissions process, you know, it, it literally, the section says none of uh, this will be used by any admissions officer. They literally don't see it. Um, and so uh, we remove those two things. And what we actually look for uh, are your soft skills. How do you perform in group-based dynamics? So we actually have a group challenge uh, where you design a presentation over about 45 minutes in a live virtual classroom with uh, other applicants to the program. And we want to see how well do you work with others. And a lot of times, you know, multiple people from the same group advance from that stage to the final stage, which is an individual interview. Um, and so we don't try and make it competitive. We try and make it collaborative because that's actually how work uh, operates today. Um, and so, you know, the last thing that I'll say uh, to your question about what employers are looking for is, you know, we hear from everybody, they're looking for diverse candidates. And that means uh, gender diversity, that means ethnic diversity, but it also means educational diversity. And so, you know, every employer that we speak to, we spoke to Fortune 500 companies, um, new head of talent yesterday, and she was saying uh, to myself and our team, you know, this is so refreshing that somebody like Mission U is now out there. And we feel like this could be a huge, huge opportunity for us to partner with you all because we're looking to draw talent from different pools from where we've always gone. And if we need to solve different problems in the future, we need to look to different talent pools. And, uh, you know, those that come from, call it more non-traditional backgrounds that, you know, have the willingness to say, you know, I want to step beyond the bounds of a traditional system uh, and explore a program that I think is actually going to invest in my future rather than, you know, me investing in theirs. And it's going to connect me to the real world skills that are actually relevant to today, not to 20 years ago. Um, that's the type of thinker and creative problem solver that companies want to bring on. Yeah, yeah. And you talk a little bit about, you know, the application process, but maybe just share a little bit about, you know, how somebody would apply and how they would kind of position themselves best, you know, to be able to be accepted. Sure. Um, so again, it's just mission you, M-I-S-S-I-O-N-U dot com. Um, and if you went to uh, that, you know, core website uh, or the same thing slash apply, uh, you can start in the application. It takes literally just a few minutes to get going. And, um, you know, the first step is you just share, uh, you know, some information about yourself, your background, et cetera. Um, you know, the second step is a quantitative challenge. It happens online. Um, and, you know, my advice there is, um, first of all, you know, what we're looking for is just a baseline of arithmetic abilities. We're not looking for you to demonstrate advanced trigonometry because that's not actually needed in the job. Uh, just that you have a basic understanding of, of kind of math concepts that are going to be used in today's world. But at the same time, we purposely uh, tell you uh, in that um, quantitative challenge that you are able and encouraged to use Google uh, for any and all answers that you are pursuing. And a lot of these questions can literally just be figured out by using Google to get to the answer. Uh, because, again, that's how the real world operates, right? 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 It's, it's not, you know, um, filling out uh, bubbles of like multiple choice of the pen and paper necessarily. So. Um, with that in mind, you know, what I would encourage anyone to do is uh, go to missionu.com, start an application and, you know, make sure that you just invest the, the time to put your best foot forward and follow the directions. We make it really clear for their uh, students. We also built out a custom 
uh, admissions portal. And in that portal, there's actually videos at each step that help um, guide you and give you tips as to how to be most successful because we want to serve as many students as possible. You know, all cohorts at Mission U are targeted around 25 students. So, you know, it might range from 20 up to, you know, call it high 20s. Uh, but we believe in the small group based student model. And so uh, it's a mix of online and in person. We think online is incredibly effective, uh, but we prefer live online coursework over pre-recorded. And so uh, most of the online, almost entirely uh, the online experience is live and be, you know, yourself and your classmates um, directly behind your, your video cam. Um, and then we also think that the in-person component is absolutely critical in particular for soft skill development. So it's a blend of between the two, uh, about 80% online, 20% uh, of the curricular experiences in person. But we also want people to build lifelong friendships. Um, so you know, our students range from 18 to 39. Uh, I would say most are in their 20s. Um, but uh, you know, one of the requirements is you have to live within 50 miles of your cohort city, and that's so that not only are you you know able to attend the in-person sessions, which is a four-day orientation, and then at minimum every other week. Uh, after that, but we also want you to build, you know, lifelong bonds with um, your cohort mates. And so a lot of students, you know, relocate uh, to, you know, the city of their cohort. Uh, right now, um, you know, our first two cohorts were in San Francisco in uh, the Bay Area in 2018. We'll open up at least one new city that we'll be announcing shortly, um, likely on the, the East Coast. Um, and so, uh, you know, we really designed it for flexibility and affordability. You don't have to live in the downtown part. Uh, to be able to participate, you can live, again, 50 miles away in a more affordable area uh, of your city if you choose to do so. But uh, we do absolutely believe that, you know, the future is uh, a, an individual who has the ability to both operate in an online context and in an in-person one and be equally effective. And so we've modeled the program around that. Yeah, that's so exciting. Um, okay, one last question. You're obviously, you know, an incredible entrepreneur. You're You're able to see between the lines, which is such a great gift. Uh, if, if you could share, you know, a couple of tips to listeners from your own, you know, money journey, maybe lessons that went right, lessons that didn't go right, of how somebody could, you know, put themselves out there, be bold, you know, and, and create opportunities for themselves, you know, regardless of their bank account balance, what would you tell them? You know, I, I would say first and foremost, it's absolutely critical to gain uh, footing in financial literacy. You know, it blows me away that um, in the higher education system, financial literacy isn't taught, right? I mean, again, even as an econ major, you know, I didn't have much financial literacy from my traditional education. It happened in my home because, you know, my, my dad um, came from nothing. He was an immigrant, child of two Holocaust survivors. And so he had to learn it on his own. But he instilled that in us from a young age was an understanding of financial literacy. And so I think it's worth investing in that type of education. It's actually a really critical part of our first trimester um, at, at Mission U is teaching financial literacy to every one of our students so that they can be you know, savvy uh, with their dollars going forward because we plan to help them earn a lot of them. <laughs> um, and then you know, the second thing is just to be an ROI driven consumer. You know, and, and that I think applies in a lot of places, you know, whether it's the way that you spend your money on your food um, you know, be ROI driven, meaning return on investment. So, you know, it might make sense to buy better food for yourself because that's going to, you know, increase your long term health and well being. And, and, you know, it might make more sense to buy the, you know, $2 item over the $1.50 because the ROI is going to be there. And if you're an ROI driven consumer across all parts of your life, I think that it can lead to tremendous success. Again, in the higher education space, very few people, I think, historically question the ROI of you know, taking out a huge loan and going to a traditional you know, large college and spending a bunch of years on that campus. But what we're seeing both from Gen Z as well as millennials in particular, I think is uh, there's now a conscientiousness around uh, the ROI of dollars that are being spent even on their own education. And I think if you constantly keep that in the back of your mind and at the same time, you know, make a commitment to your personal greatness. You know, no one else is going to um, commit to your greatness, to your ability to go out and be a transformative agent of positive change in the world, more so than you can make that commitment. And that requires investing in yourself, in your long term growth and then building, you know, what I would almost consider uh, a, a personal advisory board of folks around you that can be that guiding, you know, um, support system. Uh, as you navigate what is an incredibly complex world ahead. But if you surround yourself with like-minded folks that are incredibly ambitious, 
uh, that are thoughtful and that at the end of the day are high integrity people, uh, I guarantee every person can find a path to tremendous success. Wow, what great advice. Thank you so much for sharing that. All right, so Adam, tell listeners one more time where they can find Mission U. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, easiest place is our website. It's M-I-S-S-I-O-N-U.com. Uh, on social media, again, we're Mission U across the board. And, you know, you can find more about me either on my website. It's just adambrod.com. And uh, I use social media a lot. And so whether it's Twitter, Instagram, et cetera, again, you can just look me up and, uh, you know, on Twitter, it's um, just Adam Braun on Instagram, uh, ITS Adam. It's Adam Braun is, is my name there. You know, I'm just, I'm really stoked about the future. I'm really stoked about the different alternatives that are coming into higher education and that there's actually going to be options for people and they're not going to look like they have in the past. And I think that is just really super exciting. So as always, you can follow me on Twitter and in Instagram at Shauna Game. And if you love this podcast, do me a favor, share it with your friends, shout it out on social media, and please head on over to the link in the show notes and leave us a review. Whatever you're saving up for, a CD from Sandy Spring Bank lets you grow your savings at a guaranteed rate. Right now, earn interest at 4.5% APY on an 8-month CD special or 4.25% APY on a 14-month CD special. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com slash CD specials. Minimum opening deposit to earn the annual percentage yield is $500 for the 8-month CD special and $2,500 for the 14-month CD special. Member FDIC.